So today I am going to tell you about five of the most amazing violins in the world. They each have a feature that makes them really unique. So the first instrument, a violin that was made famous by the violinist Niccolo Paganini, the Il Canone violin. So the Il Canone Guarneri's violin was made in 1743 and that was just one year before Guarneri's died. Guarneri's was one of the most famous violin makers in Cremona at the time along with Stradivarius. His instruments sell for you know over 10 million dollars but I think this instrument would be just about priceless. You can actually look at this violin now in the Genoa Town Hall along with some other Paganini memorabilia. But what's really interesting is that Paganini, one of the most famous violinists in the world, he had a bit of a habit of gambling and he actually lost his favorite violin gambling. He was just given this Guarnerius violin by a businessman and he could keep playing. The violin just had this deep, rich, strong sound and he called it My Cannon, which in Italian is Il Canone. Paganini played that violin right until the end of his life and it became world famous. Unfortunately now it is behind glass and doesn't get played very often but they do bring it out every now and then for a concert. The next instrument is the Titanic violin and that's interesting for a totally different reason. It wasn't a spectacularly made violin. Uh, it looks to me like it's probably just a mass-produced German instrument but it survived the Titanic. So Wallace was the band leader of the band on the Titanic and they supposedly kept playing while things were going quite chaotic on the ship. They found the violin floating in a suitcase, a, a small casket or suitcase next to his body and it was returned to his family. Then it kind of got lost for a while and then it was recently rediscovered in an attic as usual. And uh, But they did some analysis, scientific analysis on the instrument and there was distinct um, salt crystals in the timber of the instrument so you know it, it, it they're very certain that that was the instrument that Wallace had with him on the Titanic and then also the inscription so it's a lot of proof the crazy thing is you know for a, it was probably one of the most expensive German mass-produced <laughs> instruments ever sold at auction normally these instruments these mass-produced instruments can be worth somewhere between maybe a thousand US dollars if they're you know if they're working a thousand and maybe six seven thousand for really well-made instruments uh, often you'll pick them at a, up at auction for just three four hundred dollars this one sold for 1.6 million dollars uh, but you know you can see how important the story is and, and that's why I love following the stories of instruments because quite often they have a really high value to the family of the players because, you know, they were so much part of the players' lives. The next violin is a Stradivarius violin. It's the Huberman Strad from 1713. So in 1936, Bronislav Huberman was giving a concert at Carnegie Hall and he had two violins, a Guarnerius and a Stradivarius. And a lad in his 20s, he, he worked around the corner and he'd actually known the door person at Carnegie Hall and he was able to get in, he said he was a huge fan of Huberman but couldn't afford a ticket. So the door person allowed him to go backstage and that's when the Huberman Stradivarius disappeared. It disappeared for 50 years and on his deathbed Julian Altman the violinist that had stolen the violin admitted that he had actually stolen the Huberman Strad 
uh, he had actually covered it with shoe polish to make it look different and he played it for his entire career of 50 years and uh, it then reappeared and after that Joshua Bell bought it and he absolutely loves that violin he calls it his red violin and he now plays it in concerts all over the world but that was quite a mystery and quite a story the next violin is interesting because it's by a modern violin maker who's still alive his name is Sam Sigmundowitz and the violin is from 1991. It was owned by Isaac Stern. From Isaac Stern's estate, the instrument went on auction with Terezio. 2019, it sold at auction for 132,000 US dollars. And what makes that violin unique is that it's the instrument that sold for the most from a living violin maker. Sam used to be a sculptor, so he already knew how to make beautiful sculptures. So his violins are very beautiful, great copies, and he's also done a lot of research into sound. Now the buyer was Chad Hoops, who is a soloist. I heard him here in Brisbane and, uh, and actually saw the violin, and uh, he said, buying that violin was the best thing he ever did. He was given a Stradivarius to play on before and he said playing on the Sigmundo Witz just makes it so much easier. The Stradivarius was always really hard work and, and this instrument, it sings, it sounds beautiful. I heard it in a hall and it's just amazing. So yes, that's, uh, that's very unique um, and uh, since then I think Four of Sam Zygmuntowicz's violins have sold for more than a hundred thousand US dollars at auction. Pretty crazy for a living violin maker. The final instrument is the most famous violin ever. It's called the Messiah Stradivarius violin. So the Messiah Stradivarius violin was made just three years after the Huberman violin. It's a beautifully made violin, but there's one thing that makes it special and sets it apart from any other violin. What happened was that the violin nearly never got played. So Stradivarius' son sold the violin to Count Cosio di Salabu in 1775. So it was untouched in the workshop. The youngest son got the violin. He wasn't really a violin maker. He had a lot of other wealth. And he sold it to Count Cosio, who then sold it on to Luigi Teresio. And Teresio kept telling the famous French violin maker, Viome, about this incredible violin that he had that was a Stradivarius in a most un touched condition. It was just really an amazing violin and he kept teasing and teasing until one day the son of Yom said, Mr. Tarisio, your violin is like the Messiah of the Jews. You expect him to appear but he never does. So when Tarisio died and Yom heard about it, he got on the fastest coach that he could to Milan and ended up buying whatever he could from the Teresio estate. So that was Viome's biggest, most profitable purchase of his entire life. In that purchase, he bought numerous Stradivarius violins, Guarnerius violins, Gurdachnini violins, and lots of other instruments. And that actually ascended him. Uh, he was already a very fine craftsman. And so that really ascended him to become one of the best known violin makers in the world. And he still is the best French violin maker ever. So the Messiah Stradivarius then passed through various hands and made its way to hills in London, not before 
Viau made numerous copies of the instruments. He loved to copy Stradivarius violins and he opened the instruments so he copied them exactly. I saw the Messiah Stradivarius violin in 2016 uh, for its 100th anniversary. There was a special exhibition in Cremona and a lot of people suspected that the violin was actually the work of Viaume. They showed a lot of Viaume instruments right next to the Messiah Stradivarius and it was clearly very different work. It's normally housed at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford in England. So if you ever want to see it, it's a great place to go. There's also, I believe there's a harp and a few other instruments by Stradivarius. So he wasn't just a violin maker. So that's an amazing violin. It hardly ever gets played. The varnish is in an immaculate condition and it allows violin makers to, to really see how Stradivarius made his instruments. Or let me say how Stradivarius and his apprentices and workers made instruments. So there you go. There are, these were five of the most amazing violins. There are other famous violins, and I may talk about them at another time. I will do videos that go into more detail of some of the instruments, so that'll be really interesting, so look out for that. And subscribe to my channel and press the like button so you make sure that you find out when I post those videos. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button and the violin and the violin family. It just makes a beautiful sound and it allows musicians the most amazing way to express themselves, to express music and to really bring love and emotion and everything else to the audience. So keep making beautiful music and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.